finally uh, getting into what will be a game two of the series between Fifth Harmony and Team Chemistry. This is week five of the Dragon League. Brought to you by Love D and Awombo. How are you feeling, Love D? I'm feeling pretty good. We had a little bit of delay starting into these games, but we're about to get into the champion select. Okay, and you're going to have to run this one for me for a little bit just because got to edit some stuff. Alrighty. Uh, just a quick explanation for those of you who are finally joining us for the beginning of this stream. We did have a little bit of delay coming in from the side of Fifth Harmony. They were not able to field a full roster in time for the first delay, which means they are going to be losing game one as a forfeit. We're going into the second game of this best of three series with Team Chemistry being up 1-0 at the same time. Mother Milk is the new support e-sub as well for Fifth Harmony, so they are going to be losing the first ban in their rotation. So getting into that now, we can see that the bans are finally starting to come down, Nunu being prioritized right away. They wanted to take that away from UGLS and uh, decided to not give him the king of counter jungling in this matchup. Which I think that's I, I don't think that's fine. I mean, especially um, I think Nunu in my opinion only works at like higher elos, like probably like Diamond up. I think is when Nunu has like the most impact, just because that sort of counter jungling playstyle doesn't really translate uh, too well. I mean, the neutral objective focus is really nice, but without having that early gang pressure, as well as you know the catch up XP where the enemy jungler can catch up really easily after those counter jungles sort of nullifies the strengths. At the same time, you gotta remember with those new new buffs that came out not too long ago, he is pretty tanky, so they don't want to have to deal with the walking brick wall that is Nunu. As well as banning away a few mid laners in this matchup. Oriana, Vagar, and Cassidan have been banned away. Of course, the Vagar could technically be flexed. Uh, which team was it that played that in LCS not too long yeah, ago? Yeah, it was played this in LCS, but what hasn't been played in LCS probably for a really long time or anywhere is actually the Zac of lock-in for team chemistry that really surprised that band didn't come through that is one of the issues having that one band taken away from them they did ban away the Cassidan and the caitlin caitlin of course is one of the strongest laning adcs has a really nice curve on her power spikes with the way shiv and rapid fire now interact with the warlords uh, and Cassidan, of course has been considered safer and safer to pick as of late. He's really not become too much of an issue in the laning phase, especially with the new Deathfire touch that a lot of people have been taking on him as well. His earlier weaknesses are no longer feeling quite as oppressive as they once were. So we can see now first rotation picks. Like you mentioned, the Zac, a little bit surprised to see that manage to come through, but in return, Fifth Harmony have picked up the Shen and the Kha'Zix. This is a matchup that uh, we have not really seen much of. The Kha'Zix has fallen out of favor just ever so slightly, and of course with Zac almost never getting actually picked, we're going to see which jungler is going to be punished harder by the other early on in these 1v1s. Really a uh, kind of situation dependent on which one comes out on top in the early invades and Early Ooh, 1v1s in the jungle. And Akali locked in. Alright. That's pretty spicy. Yeah, Akali's, and, uh... She just had a round of buffs, didn't she? The itemization's have? just prior... Uh, I mean, itemization's really favoring her right now. I mean, yes, Gunblade has been pretty strong for the last few patches. Um, more and more junglers... Or junglers. More and more mid laners now opting to take the Storm Raider Surge as well has helped the Akali out. She's not nearly getting pushed around as much in oppressive laning phases. And we can see with Cassidan, Ari, Oriana, and Vega are now banned away. That's a lot of mid lane bans that will also help ease Akali. Not, not nearly as much variety to pick into her. Uh, we can see in the top lane, though, that's going to be our second matchup that we can actually visibly see. Poppy versus Shen. Uh, going classic. back a little ways. What a classic. Really dependent on uh, how the poppy really plays this matchup because if she times her w perfectly she's never getting hit with the taunt but at the same time shen can try and bait that out he definitely does 
favor in that trading a little bit with the way his percentage max HP is uh, more reliable than Poppy's might be. And uh, we can see with an Ari getting banned, a Zyra getting banned, and then an Annie ban uh, as well. Yeah, this mid lane priority, wow. Most likely mid lane, yes. Uh, Andy support has not seen play for quite a while, and I can't imagine picking Van Annie to begin with anyway, or uh, having Annie in either composition. Which is going to be locked in on the side of Fifth Harmony. They see that the Van's been locked in. They feel comfortable going into this 1v1 in the laning phase. Uh, with the Doran shield being introduced a few patches ago with the changes to uh, making it more favored towards HP regen and against poke it's definitely a favorable item you can take into the twitch matchup Whoa. because all those ticks of poison Kale locked in uh, is that going to be going then, mid? yeah that has to go mid yeah Kale versus the Akali That's... this is definitely not a matchup we're used to seeing but what it does provide is it opens up a lot more protection, very direct protection for that vein, that hyper carry vein. They've got double front lines now, lots of CC, and if this Janna gets locked in, a ton of protection for this vein as well. So even if she gets dove very early on by the Akali Kha'Zix Shen combo, she'll have the tools to at least be able to live a little bit longer in these matchups. Yeah, I feel like they're really, really uh, focusing their team comp around uh, Racker and Razor, like. There's no potential for any other champions to really carry here, even so much as having such a losing mid lane matchup just to give that vein more protection. Yeah, and uh, we can see that neither... Oh, was that a placeholder, maybe? Yeah. Uh, we'll have to see. Feels bad, man. Always gotta give us the runaround with the... Kale must be Kale must be a placeholder for something else, then. Yeah. Well, I just did a, a quick look up on, uh, I forget what his name is, I think it's the only G. No, the Purring, yeah, Purring, his uh, most played champion and ranked is actually Kassadin, so death target bans. And I think it's really interesting how they're just completely banning him out with very little uh, ADC focus. Right, and they did ban away the Vagar on the other side. Uh... I'm not sure if they thought that would be a mid lane or a support Vagar, but with locking in that Vayne very early on, it seems that they didn't want to risk it being in the support, because obviously Vayne does not have a lot of counterplay available to her. If she gets caught inside of the event horizon from the Vagar, she's really stuck in there for quite a lot of time, and that gives uh, Twitch plenty of free time to spray and pray into that stun. Maybe they felt they didn't want to have to deal with the potential problems that might arise from playing into Vagar, so that is one of the more interesting bands coming yeah, out from this game. Yeah, especially because looking at the um, the support champion pools and the mid laner champion pools, neither of them actually have Vagar anywhere uh, on their OP.GG's, so... Okay. So, just getting word, Kale was a placeholder for LeBlanc. Okay, well, LeBlanc into the Akali. We've been seeing LeBlanc not be uh, quite as popular as she once was with the original uh, Gunblade into Lich Bane build that had been surfacing on a few different mid laners, but she definitely still has a very strong laning phase, especially into the very melee, the me melee and very prone Akali. Uh, she might still go the Gunblade approach, try and match that sustain that we could see and also still match the one versus one in the one three one split push as well yeah that's exactly what i was thinking though i really like this leblanc pick just because it does add such strong uh side lane pressure with her ability to duel and her ability to shove waves really hard uh, it adds a lot of variety to this to uh, team chemistry's team comp so they're not so pigeon so they don't pigeonhole themselves so much into this we have to 5v5 team comp and protect this vein and she has to hard carry like crazy it gives us some variety and some dual threat so that if perhaps if vein doesn't have the showing that she needs to you can fall back on the leblanc or if you're not winning the team fights you can split push with the blanc with the leblanc brew uh going to be setting up streaming yeah, announcement now this Why is this being so hard? What's this dude taking so long for? You already know what you're playing. 
Yep, so there's the LeBlanc is going to take oh, yeah. teleport. It's really what you want to have on LeBlanc. I mean, she could have gone for the uh, Ignite uh, just to give us more kill pressure onto the Akali, which is very possible in a melee range matchup, but uh, in my opinion, much better to go for uh, cross map pressure and potential objective taking. Right, uh, I mean, when you take the teleport, it definitely opens up the possibilities of the 131, and it also allows you to have a little bit of a bamboozling going on, because of course, Shen does like to go for those 140 and 131 split pushes. He has multiple globals to get around the map. So, this is a potential play you can make as well. You can collapse onto the Shen and then immediately match any kind of global pressure that might be coming from the other side with two teleports. Yeah. We may have Go ahead. We may have the Akali take teleport as well. It is a little bit hard to see because this client still has not been fixed. <laughs> Being able to see the right side of the summoner spells is something that I've been wanting for a while, but it looks like we're going to have an ignite on the Akali instead. She wants to go for maybe the level 6 all-in. Very strong all-in potential with that new passive. Not a lot of people expect the amount of burst that can come from it. And uh, we'll have to see if she can take full advantage of that burst and see if she can really utilize that ignite fully. Yeah, I don't think she's going to have enough lane pressure by the time she hits level 6 to be able to utilize it. But hey, that's just my uneducated opinion. But as we slowly count down towards the spectator delay, team chemistry on the blue side, we have the color C in top lane, Corpin bouncing around on that Zac in the jungle, Purring bouncing around on the Blanc in the mid lane, Rackham Razor on that Vayne and Eve Het on Janna. And then on the red side, fifth Harmony Infinite Rampage, you guys know him well on that Shen in top lane, Ugis, a E sub. Thank you for playing with us, Ugas, in the jungle. One Lonely G on Akali in the mid lane. Jungle Milk on ADC and Mother Milk on support. Right, and uh, with that two and a half minute delay, we do have a little bit of time to look over these compositions, kind of talk about win conditions, weaknesses, things like that. Uh, is there anything you'd like to start us off with for either side? Anything that speaks to you on these compositions? Mm, they're actually... Startlingly similar, besides the early jungle pressure that I can come out from Zach and the winning oh god uh, top lane oh no. matchup. Like if it goes, are to we the having one a remake one. or are we not? Is there an issue? Look at Zach's summoner spell. Oh, that hmm. that shouldn't happen. I sort of just uh, it blended in with his green icon picture. I didn't even notice. That well, is really unfortunate that's gonna be tough for them i don't think we're gonna remake yeah i don't i don't think you're allowed to remake even for something as important as that i have never seen that before yeah, out of mean, all the games and series i've casted i have never had the jungler forget to take smite he might have been you know i'm actually gonna look him up right now i'm gonna bet that he was playing adc before this game yeah um Wow, that's that's actually going to be huge, especially early on in the game. Uh, without having that smite available, it means you literally do know he he last played Lee Sin and Vi and Normals. That's oh. unlucky. Wow. Uh, without that smite available to you, means you can't buy a jungle item, which means you will not get level two no matter which camp you start. Dude, that is going to be huge. Yeah, I actually it's definitely see it. going to. Uh, it's definitely the handicap that Zach might need, kind of equalize this game. But that is going to really uh, hurt your early clear, your level one clear, and it means that your scaling is going to be worse than basically everyone else's in the game because a full clear of the jungle without a jungle item is almost a full level and a half difference against the enemy jungler. Yeah, it is going to be a constant uh, level deficit, especially when they start getting to those later levels. But I could definitely see them losing the entire game simply off of not having smite. Baron control wouldn't be there, neutral objective control wouldn't be there. He'd never have enough sustain or levels to try to uh, have some early game leverage like we're used to seeing Zacks have playing that gank heavy playstyle. Uh, that's really, yeah, that I almost want to say this game is close and shut simply off of that, but 
We've seen Stranger Things. Uh, not much Stranger. Yeah, honestly, it's probably the weirdest thing I've seen. Yeah, this is, um... Well, I, I gotta tell you, last week when I was casting a series, I wound up witnessing a 4v5 victory, so... Crazier things have definitely succeeded. I mean, at least you have all five players available to you, so there's always chances for a comeback, but... At the same time, this is a very grave error, and it's going to be a huge hamper on the early game pressure that Team Chemistry is going to be able to bring to the table. Yeah, without a doubt. But uh, I have a theory about 4v5 games and why we see so many great 4v5 game comebacks. It's because you, you don't have another member for them to get fed off of. Well, that's true. The one AFK was Red Flame, and if there's anyone you'll ever get fed off of, uh... Dude, it's him. My boy. Come on. He's not even in this game, and he's still getting flamed. Well, I mean, I, I gotta do what I can for my boy Gator49. <laughs> but, actually, loading into the game now, we can see that that is definitely not a mistake on the uh, champion select screen. There is no smite for the Zac. Uh... We could look at some other things, see if there's anything out of the blue. Maybe in Masteries? Uh, we can see that Twitch has opted for the Fervor of Battle, but Vayne has opted for the Warlord. So a little bit of difference in priority and methods for these ADCs. Vayne does want the sustain in that lane that that Warlords provides. It does give her a nice little burst of movement speed as well. And if she buys one of the Shiv or Rapid Fire items, definitely a little bit of extra boost to her. Uh, on the other side, we can see that Lulu has opted for the uh, Thunderlords, while Janna is, of course, going for the Windspeakers, give a little bit of extra resistances to her Twitch. So, some different philosophies in how this bot lane should be played from both teams. A little bit of aggression from both the junglers and the ADCs, uh, or differences in aggression, I might say. And I'm actually, that's really, actually I'm pretty confused by the Thunderlords that agree on Lulu. I mean, sure, it gives it a little bit more hope damage but it's just gonna get shielded out and sustained back up by Janna anyway right and it's important to note also with the Janna versus Lulu being picked up neither are really picked in the current meta in almost every single pro region because melee supports are in right now tank supports uh, you got Alistair Braum uh, really just a ton of and of course you know the very faithful Leona Especially in lower elo, Leona has seen a lot of success. Very straightforward and tons of CC potential, all lens, initiation. Yeah, Mother really Milk actually a good has a lot of play support. on Leona. Right, and so I'm a little surprised to see both of these supports pick up mages instead of the more popular uh, melee supports that have been coming out. I mean, Thresh, Tom Kench, these are all really good champions. And when you have something like a Tom Kench or a Braum, that's really just as much protection as current Lulu will provide to you, especially with all the dive that might be coming in from things like the Poppy and the Zac. Yeah. Uh, if you guys were looking a little bit earlier, uh, you would have seen that Corpin had took, took his sweet old time buying his items, probably is struggling on what to buy. Went for Ruby Crystal 2 pots. I'm personally in disagreement with it. I feel like you should have went Cloth Armor 4 just because it gives him a little bit more resistances in the jungle and uh, it gives him more sustain because he's, he's gonna have very little of that but you know he could uh, easily use those blobs to sustain himself so it could pay off for him. It's a bold At move. least his his Q is does have a ratio based on his maximum HP as well. So technically, with his Q, he'll be dealing slightly more damage. But yes, I, I do agree. Maybe even something crazy like a Hunter's Potion. Who knows? But I mean, really, <laughs> there isn't an exact protocol for jungling without Smite in 2017. Maybe in years remember, past, but this is we're in the future yeah, now. I, I do remember the good old. Uh, Heal Ignite or Heal Exhaust Fiddlesticks jungle back when you didn't get bonus XP from Smite, but those times are gone. Yeah, it's also, I feel like, just to theorize a little bit, if these situations are swapped, if it was Uges who didn't have uh, Smite, I feel like it would have been so much worse, like immensely worse, because at least Corpin is playing Zac, who has a lot of utility, and utility doesn't re really need stats to scale. 
or be or stay effective. But if it was a Kha'Zix that had those smite constantly behind, Kha'Zix behind literally does nothing. I mean, you might as well just AFK at that point. Literally does nothing. But yeah, um, at least we can see that there's definitely going to be uh, an amount of differential between these two clears as well. Obviously, the jungle item does provide a lot of intangible uh, help that you receive from it. Like, you don't even realize just how oh, much the heal. bonus damage. <laughs> huh? Oh! He used the heal to continue Kha'Zix taking blue took buff. the scuttle right next to Zach. had no idea that uh, he might have been able to invade, but we see a top lane gank coming in very early on. Yeah, definitely should have invaded instead. Yeah, Poppy's just going to get out just fine. You can see that uh, the lanes are pretty even right now. In fact, the Kali was shoving, and you know you're playing against the Zac with so no smite. There's no chance he'll be able to smite away any camps you try to steal. So, it's going for that top lane gank instead. Not even letting the Shen set up the gank. Really, uh, there was nothing you gained from trying that gank. And we can see that Shen has not received any benefit from it either. Yeah. Uh, Infinite Rampage's health bar is actually ticking in the red now, simply be from the poke that Color C has been putting down on him. And I touched on upon it a little bit earlier, but this is a pretty one match for Poppy. Right, we can see just the way these trading patterns are going. Shen is not playing around his Q at all, and he's basically getting punished every time he tries to go up for poke. He almost Ooh. gets slammed into the wall there. Very nice taunt, realizing Poppy wanted to try and go for an all-in maybe right there yeah at the very least he does have the wave shoving towards him so he can try to cs that under tower and shen does pretty well to cs that but still it, it's it's fairly grim for him right now in these early stages yeah a little bit more trading back and forth no more mana left for the poppy a little bit of trading again in the bottom lane Ooh. condemn lands yeah actually does land the condemn but both adcs and the bot laners alike are just going to walk away from that trade Team chemistry getting the lesser half of that and I feel like I don't know if I, I can't stop thinking about the Zach uh, misplay on the uh, oh just boy. because of, oh yeah he's definitely dead smite or not there goes the elastic slingshot Ugas is uh, actually here to Zach respond but Corpin stuck under no, the tower down. might get finished off pops his passive as the last auto from the tower finishes him off as well as Ugas finishing him off, so first blood onto the Kha'Zix. Definitely a pretty major misplay in how they coordinated that dive. The original dive was a good idea. Shen was low, definitely a high potential for a kill there, but Zack was not charging his elastic slingshot when the poppy went in, so by the time he was actually in the air, Shen had enough time to move out of the way and position himself out of the Zack's range. And instead, Mons manages to get turned on, and uh, even after burning the flash, he doesn't manage to get the safety in time. Going to put him even further behind in this matchup. He has gone for the Bomby Cinder first item, and uh, with the changes to Bomby Cinder, it is now back to a full 100% bonus damage to monsters instead of the 50% it used to be, uh, which means you'll at least have a little easier time clearing. Yeah, hopefully you can have a little bit easier time clearing. At the very least, you can still get that, but you can pick up the Sunfire Cape. This isn't going to get the scaling uh, HP bonus, but really he's going to take whatever you can get in these uh, dire situations. And I feel like Jungle Milk is really going to have to be the main proponent of these team fights. You can't expect their solo lanes to win, considering that they are at pretty huge deficits as it stands right now. Uh, one Luigi sitting at about a 20 CS deficit, as well as a trade happening in the mid lane that went towards the favor of him. Uh, yeah, that's a little caster curse. And then similarly that in top lane, distortion from the LeBlanc though. Uh, yeah, similarly the, the in top w lane, pretty big uh, CS deficit. It's gonna keep growing as Poppy scales into this matchup. Important to note though that the longer these trades go, the better it is for Shen. Even though he didn't get the Bomby Cinder, so he's not uh, getting that little bit of extra magic damage from it, he does have the Grasp of the Undying. And that comes up a lot faster than the Courage of the Colossus does, which means, oh, this is an all in. Ooh, That's taking the kill. very low. One Lily G, no misplays from him, knows when he should commit and really dominates Purring. That was. 
very convincing kill. That's the unexpected damage we were talking about as well. She did go for the ignite and she did manage to take advantage of it. So despite the early laning deficit she has CS wise, she gets the all in and she manages to take full advantage of that level six burst that we're so used to seeing from Akali's. Yeah, that's gonna equalize that laning phase and we could potentially see a snowball from her onto purring, but uh, that would be a little bit less likely to happen. You can see the revolver has been bought as well for the Akali, so she, her autos are going to be hurting. That's a huge amount of extra burst early on in the game. A lot of people don't expect the burst as well. And we can see on the other side, the Vampiric Scepter and the Amplifying Tome has been picked up by, by the LeBlanc. So she is also going for the Gunblade, but her components are not nearly as strong in the all-in. Really a little more sustain having, and since LeBlanc doesn't have the highest base AD to begin with, she's not going to get a lot of value out of that first purchase. Yeah, definitely an overstep. Still has a CS lead, so potentially leverage that advantage. However, I, I wouldn't really count on it, considering Lonely one Lonely G seems to know this matchup a lot better than Purring does. But So looking ahead towards the future a little bit, first dragon is a mountain drake. Uh, Ugis is actually in a position, well, in terms of items and experience, where he could solo that uh, if he chooses to do so. He's had a lot of pressure uh, from his bot laners, uh, keeping Rackham Razor and Yvette under their tower for most of this, even though Rackham Razor actually has a 25 CS lead, uh, which that, that's pretty massive when you're going to try to be scaling. Right, and we can see that that Thunderlords on the Lulu has not been working out so far. She hasn't been able to really poke through the su sustain from Warlords and the shielding from Janna, meaning that really uh, Vayne's going to be having a pretty easy time to scale up and get her first few items. Yeah, first few items, that's uh, surprisingly poignant. Uh, picks up a Brawler's Glove BS sword, boots, and a dagger, so came back to lane with lots of shopping bags. Picked yeah, up a and lot, and she actually has entirely 300 gold, 350 gold nearly over a jungle milk. So that's almost a long sword difference of gold. Right, and with the BF sword by first back, along with the brawler's gloves, the potential for the crit is definitely a huge boon to the vein because in these all ends, the Bilgewater Cutlass just nearly isn't nearly as strong. Uh, the act of course does give like an extra auto's worth of damage in the 1v1 but overall that bf sword is just going to pay dividends assuming there's any kind of skirmishing in the bottom lane oh skirmishing in the, the middle lane as purring is getting chunked out there by the combo from one lonely g force to burn the flash right and we can see that this trading is already going over to the side of akali we can see the auto being empowered by the revolver there means that's a ton of extra upfront burst coming into that combo and it's just not something that the LeBlanc is prepared for. Forced to flash away instead of using her distortion. There's some bad trading patterns and not respecting how Akali is going to fight against you means that she's forced to burn a 7 or she definitely did not have to. Ooh, Kalisi actually got stunned up under the tower, able to pick up the buckler, stop a little bit of that damage, but going to that mid lane trade a little bit of an unfortunate time for purring as right as that trade happened a few seconds later one little g's ignite came back up so she can just go straight in her face once more and probably pick up a kill for it if she doesn't have distortion up she's not quite strong enough yet to go for the hundred to zero but yes one or two more combos especially with jungle help in the mid lane means that Kali is going to be able to push her lead and most likely equalize the cs deficit she's currently having uh, we can see since that first failed gank in the top lane as well, Zach has not exerted any pressure in any of the lanes, and he's a full three levels down from uh, the Kha'Zix, really hurting from not having that jungle item available to him. Yeah, I think it's interesting though because Ugis also hasn't really had any to uh, lane pressure or ganks since that first top lane gank where he picked up first blood, so that is a huge criticism to me that he isn't either leveraging the, the jungle advantage and invading or pressuring the lanes since, you know, still the jungle advantage where Corpin isn't in a position where he can pressure those lanes. We can see that Kha'Zix is at the top side of the map. He's not exactly the healthiest right now, uh, but 
he can definitely still try and go for a play in the top side pretty soon. That lane has been frozen for quite some time, and we can see that Shen has managed to cut this CS deficit down to just about 10 or so. Uh, is this some all in maybe? Nope, just more trading back and forth. In the bottom lane, we can see that that 25 CS advantage for the Bane has been kept steady throughout this laning phase. Bane is perfectly fine scaling up, even though the Twitch would also like to get a couple items under his belt to become the truly scary monster that he is. Uh, going invisible and basically assassinating targets as an ADC, Vayne definitely does not mind it considering she has the weaker of the two laning phases. Yeah, for... I feel for Akram Razor in this game considering the double assassin in the mid lane of the jungle is going to be pretty annoying to play against, but if he has Yvette there to back him up, would alleviate some of that dive pressure, but if he's gone or if he gets blown up himself, then that's going to be a really difficult team fight to win. And we can see with how this Kha'Zix is building, he might just be full on skipping the first uh, jungle four item. Down bot. Just going for that LeBlanc clone is going to spot them out. Looks like they're going to be backing away at the right time. They're going to be able to get out just fine. But the Kha'Zix build, Duskblade Rush, almost definitely guaranteed. Uh, people have been talking about how strong this lethality patch actually is. Everyone's saying by Duskblade, by Duskblade, uh, and Kha'Zix has opted to just straight rush it instead of even finishing his might item. With this Mountain Drake being given over, they do manage to get the pressure in the bot lane, and they know even though they didn't get anything for it, they did force the bottom lane to back away, and uh, that means that they got a little bit of free time in the bottom lane to take that Drake without contest. Yeah, Lil even, coming in. I feel like even if they had you know, some help there, if they had LeBlanc, even the Zac, I mean, Zac still can't smite that away. So it's almost like Ugis himself isn't used to playing against a jungler who doesn't have smite. He's playing against him as if it's a normal Zac, which is kind of an adaptation that you need to make, especially because that is such a huge deficit to be playing from not having smite, having all those levels down, the gold, etc, etc. And I would have personally like to see Uyas take advantage of that deficit more, but seeing as it's a strange situation for both parties involved, it makes sense to me. We are at a pause. Uh, like, the pause was specifically because the ADC for Fifth Harmony disconnected, waiting to see... Seems as he has reconnected. Yeah. We're gonna go to a standby uh, real quick. In case you guys don't already know, we always talk about it. The pause ruling is that if it goes to a cons uh, cumulative of five minutes or three pauses, whichever comes first, the team that is pausing has to continue playing uh, regardless of the situation. Uh, I've actually seen some cases where a team will give up some of their pause time to the other team just to keep it, uh, you know to keep that good old competitive integrity. I like to see that uh, good showmanship out of teams. It's definitely welcome in this day and age of toxicity and flame being thrown around like balloons. Right, I think we're gonna get back into this one pretty quickly. Uh, we don't have a ready coming in yet, I think. Akali has said her team is ready, but we don't have the pause being taken off yet. So, Love D, I didn't think this was going to be the game we would see such slow early game action coming in from both teams. I mean, uh, the side of Fifth Harmony, they're fine with farming up because the Akali, of course, pretty weak early on. Really, once she gets her first item is when, of course, she really starts to hurt. The Shen is perfectly fine farming up until he gets that titanic hydra available to him uh we have some trading going yeah, on he's though he's actually is got that sunfire cape is chunking out color c here with auto attack oh he, he missed misses the taunt. oh man the taunt that taunt had hit that might have actually been a solo kill but really uh fifth harmony is perfectly content with this they know there's really not a lot of pressure with the zac being forced so far behind they're forced to uh just kind of sit back and wait they're fine with free farming of course that's a huge cs deficit in the bottom lane and the mid lane but besides that they're perfectly fine farming up and getting the items they want beforehand uh, yeah you're right only 400 gold deficit 
uh, in the side of team chemistry. However, both these teams sort of have a similar mindset and play style where they just want to sit back, you know, put it on some nice tunes and farm. And Rocket Race has definitely been doing a lot of that. He's going to start hitting pretty hard here soon. Rome did come in from the LeBlanc, but it looks like she got spotted out by a ward in the river. So they're going to be able to back away in time for that. Meanwhile, in the top side of the map, oh, the invisibility coming in from the Twitch. Are they trying to go for a play? They could potentially you... go for it. I mean, they have the uh, they have actually three stealth mechanics to sneak the Shen in. But you're actually wrong. Uh, Ugas went with a Yomu's first. Okay. Um, I'm a little surprised to see that, considering you literally managed to refresh the Dusk Blade with your ultimate as Kha'Zix. It's, a, you it's may an just older not realize build. How strong that is. I mean, if you're going to go for the Ghost Blade anyway, I know the active did get changed slightly. You get the same amount of AD from just finishing your warrior, and it's definitely a little bit on the cheaper side. Oh, Ooh, condemned from the bay. This is an all in the bottom does lane. Get condemned. And there goes the spray coming out from Jungle Milk, but a good ult from Yvette uh -oh. pushes Mother Milk into no the side. Now comes Jana, the Stand dead. United. Jonna does not have flash, goes down. It looks like they're looking for him. Infinite Rampage misses uh, the dash flash. Accidentally flashes over her, but Rockham Razor is taking some damage. Hit now under the safety of his tower, Corpin trying to join the fight. Throws the top laner in support, and now Rockham Razor looks to be okay, on the TV. offensive here, but this is a 3v1 situation. There's a deeper from color. C is able to get the, the condemn, but the body slam does not land. Infinite Rampage goes back in, uses the respite to try to give him some damage and mitigation, but he is chunking out very, very slowly. But Rocket oh Ranger himself is getting very low. And Color oh, C actually flashes and lands the heroic charge. Now he's going to be in retreat himself. Jungle Milk comes using the, the last bit of his mana. Channel that stealth, and there goes Ugas. See who this kill is going to go to. Gets the buckler, gets the funny fruit. Oh my God. She might actually live. This is insane. Kha'Zix She's getting flash, kited He's so go heavily. It. Color C needs one more auto attack, but Ugas actually eats a condemn and gets stunned to the wall. Well, only G comes over the other side to pick up that kill. I'm also oh going to pick God. up Rackham Razor as Corbin goes into his other form, is going to go down as well. That was a roller coaster of a team fight. I dare say. It was close, but we could see just the split calls coming in. Purring that entire time had the teleport available, thought it was handled, and never used it. Just was content to farm in the mid lane. We can see her backing away without even shoving it into tower in time. Meaning that what was a close team fight could have entirely been shifted. There were definitely some misplays coming in, though. We could see that Rock'em Razor had autoed a minion twice throughout that fight, messed up his silver bolts uh, twice, not really managing to finish off the Shen, forced the Poppy to continue to dive to try and salvage that kill. Uh, afterwards, we could see that a couple of misplays coming in from Infinite Rampage as well. The Flash Taunt, managing to time it perfectly to not hit the vein whether or not she had flashed anyway. I'm actually doing a little bit of a replay because I realized that I forgot to switch uh channels so they're actually looking at a standby image the entire time that was happening Unfortunately. oh okay yeah. that's really unfortunate yeah my bad guys okay so uh, for everyone who missed it or for people who want the blind cast um there was a play happening bottom the people who initiated it were uh Bane and Janna in the 2v2. They thought they got a pick on the Lulu. They didn't, in fact, get a pick on the Lulu. Janna was the first to go down because she flashed for an ulti insect on the Lulu. She went down. They overchased with the Shen ultimate onto the Bane. Got caught out by the Zac. Uh, Shen missed a flash taunt. A teleport came in from Poppy. Some kills go back and forth, but most of them go in favor of Fifth Harmony because they just messed up a few too many of their plays in the collapse yeah. and uh, LeBlanc just never actually came down and turned it into a 5v4 in favor of 5th Harmony. Yeah, where we stand right now, Lonely G, Lonely G actually picked up most of those kills now resting at 4 and 0 and if you look in the side of the atomization of the jungler and top laner, they're all specced into armor. No MR on the side of team chemistry at all. Looks like Ugas is trying to set up a gank top lane. Infant Rampage saving his Shadow Dash, but it actually does not connect. Ugas with a good play leaps over 
the Poppy Ultimate. Now there's going to be Stand United Channel to get back into that fight. But now they are under the safety of their tower, so nothing more uh, to be had. And in an interesting trade, uh, Joga Milk burns his flash. But, but he goes back in anyway, and then yeah, ults. There's the Spray and Prey, but there's the Silver Bolts prox coming look at in. the standing still autos. Yeah, who needs to uh, attack move? Oh if he actually God. gets it, that was the... Uh, the ticking damage from the expunge as well as a minion auto attack to boot Not what you really would have expected, but you know when a twitch hits his Bork power spike and Vayne's still sitting on item components It's uh, to be expected And we can see that the death cap is actually being bought second for the Akali uh, I don't know if that's really what you want to get death cap becomes exponentially better with each item you have before you buy it Getting it second, it may be a tempting thing, but it's it's really kind of the equivalent of buying an IE very early on. It really doesn't provide nearly as many bonuses as it would if you had other items with it. Yeah, what would you? Uh, what would you? I, I'm not a uh, a Kali connoisseur myself, so what, what would you have much rather see? I mean, the thing is, there's just a ton of options. If you feel you're going to have trouble getting to the vein, you could even get something as crazy as a Rylize. I would have probably gone for the Zonias. The 10% CDR is nice, and it really eliminates the possibility of dying in the 1v1 to the, the, the vein as well. But really just getting the death cap this early on, not only is it one of the most expensive things you can buy, it doesn't provide its full bonuses early on. Really, almost any item you can think of you'd buy on a Kali is better in this situation because it just provides more variety and more options for you. We can see the Blast Cone was taken, searching for the bottom lane, but they walk over several wards on the way. Uh -oh. Yeah, he gets, actually could get stunned up here. Nearly takes the Condemned to the face and into the wall. It could have been a potential but, uh, pick as Rackham Racer yeah, has now got his uh, Static Shiv. Something I've noticed, Rackham Razor, his habit is kind of to use his Condemn on the third auto. He likes to get two autos off first and then the Silver Bolt proc with the Condemn. And uh, we could see right there, he condemned one auto too late and didn't manage to get the stun of the Kha'Zix. We saw that happen earlier on as well. Maybe just a bad habit that definitely wants to be broken because timing the Condemn is definitely a crucial skill when it comes to later on team fights. I need to go. I will be right back. Yep. Solo cast, one bow. That's fine. I'm used to this one. And to uh, you know, sort of build upon his point about... Uh, you know, getting those. Oh, never mind. Hold that dot. Purring, taking a huge chunk of damage. Similarly, one lonely G is actually forced to burn his flash from that really hefty trade in the bot lane. But to go back to the two autos and a silver bolt, I think it comes from. It's like a transferable habit that came from uh, Rack and Racer going for the trades. Because whenever he goes for the trades, that's what he does. And so then that's what his you know muscle memory is used to. It seems the top laners are finding each other farther down the river as some of these ultimates have come in and now these guys are starting to scale we're seeing a lot more action here uh, just taking stock of what is going on it's a 2000 gold lead for fifth harmony simply out of kills no towers have been taken yet but they also have two dragons to boot ocean drake and mountain drake and ocean drake actually helps a lot here because you know in these kinds of extended lane phases it gives you a lot more sustain you can live through a lot more poke Okay, uh, it doesn't seem like I missed much. Nope, they just Wait, found each other. Died. Trades. Same somebody old, died? same old. What is the score oh. already, Does? Nope. Corfin actually getting invaded 101 Lonely G. Oh, boy. But lifts the mid laner towards his escape route. Kind of interesting, but Prank tried to help. Against, ends up getting chunked down himself. Infinite Rampage was in his back pocket the entire time. One Lily G now in a 1v1 situation with Rackham Razor is on cooldown though, so she's taken a lot of damage. Yvette had an attempted Janna insect, but Infinite Rampage now in a retreat. The bot lane from Fifth Harmony trying to respond here. There's no wards to spot them out, so they could have potentially turned that around. Uh, Infinite Rampage still seems to be going for purring, even though he has the back up of his bot lane. But Ugas actually jumps in there and deletes well. him. Late heal just by a split second means that the LeBlanc goes down and they don't manage to save the LeBlanc. Poppy, meanwhile, on the top side did not walk down and instead took the top tower during that time frame. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot bigger than the kill trade. But They're going for this tower. Let's get answered bot lane. I think. 
team chemistry will go for this top lane oh tower, but goodness. Janna similarly gets deleted, taking a page out of Corpin's book, and now Ugas is looking to go onto Racker and Razor, but he's forced to flash, gets the smite onto him, and that is a huge chunk of damage. Gets deleted, tasting his... There was no fear to be tasted there, but... Racker and Razor definitely paid for that, overextending a little bit. Now it looks like... See that this Kha'Zix is definitely starting to scale up now. He's already got two lethality items done and then another two kills coming over to him. Means he's gonna get to go back with a full wallet once more. Meanwhile though, that Poppy that entire time... Ooh! Yeah, Kilo Raptor one. take. Definitely uh, managed to take a tower and a half and it looks like the fighting isn't done yet. Not done at all. Infinite Rampage gets chain CC'd into that wall. Wild Growth to keep him alive. He actually is going to stay alive. Corpin goes into his bloblet form and is going to be getting killed soon. Meet on the bottom half of that screen. Oh. One Lonely G actually chunked out Color C using the Ignite to tick him down to death while he was under his safety of his own tower. That is going to be another tower gain for Fifth Harmony. And that redemption was definitely late. Uh Eve had, is that Eve had? Eve, Eve, Eve had? Anyway, Janna did not feel the need to use that redemption until it was already too late and the ticks had finished off the poppy. He was definitely in range beforehand and either just didn't notice it or didn't think it was necessary. Uh oh. Looks like we got a little bit more fighting coming in. Yeah, I'm just gonna blast coming right over. 22 uh, seconds on the Drake as well. They already have two Drakes on the side of Fifth Harmony and they may be posturing for a third one. Taking the scuttle crab now. Yeah, I personally uh, really, really would like to see uh, Cloud Drake for Fifth Harmony's comp. Uh, Mist Condemn, nothing too much, but simply because you know uh, Twitch wants to use that out of combat movement speed to sneak up on his targets. Uh, similarly to Ugas, uh, when he stealths in, uses that Yomu's active, gets even more out of combat movement speed once that. Once he gets that cloud drake, which they will be doing here quite soon, they don't have. I do uh, like this. Pink word in there, though. I do like this because anything short of a full-blown five v five team fight uh, will not Ooh, be enough. Rock and Razor finding jungle mode. Sorry to interrupt you, love D, but Rock and Razor is busy getting deleted. Right, and face checking those brushes right after seeing the dragon get taken. Really unnecessary, no reason to be there at that point. There's nothing left to take and only the potential to be caught. Uh oh. Oh, speaking of caught. Uh, whoa, one wow. little G should have been thrown in there, I'd imagine. But now here comes Infinite Rampage. A good ulti from Yvette's going to keep them safe, however. That is a really weird interaction. I 100% believe that. He didn't mean to do it that way, but the way queuing up your W works as a Kali, it's kind of the same as an Ezreal Ooh, Good e sidestep for General Milk, so many interruptions for you love the I apologize, however, Purring is getting a attempted kill onto Jungle Milk. Good sidestep from him, dodge onto the chains, but gonna slip out of there just barely with his life. Those wondering if that was a bug, how a Kali was not able to be kidnapped away by the Zac ultimate, the way her W works is like Ezreal E or Tristana Rocket Jump. Uh, when you manage to queue that up in time, it's just going to teleport you as a blink over. And so things like that uh, that E, just that split second where you can kind of move in between the knock up the, and the, uh, the movement, means that she managed to queue herself out of it and basically get out just fine. Yeah, that was definitely a weird interaction. I kind of want to watch a replay of that maybe later to see if there's... Uh, some irregularity, but as you continue into this death cap completed for one lonely G, so he's going to be hitting even harder. Renan's Hurricane, Bork for Jungle Milk, so all across the board on the side of Fifth Harmony, we're seeing those two item power spikes come in. And I really don't like how this vein is building. Yes, there is a Shen, but he's not nearly the biggest target you have to deal with right now. So going for this Blade of the Rune King instead of finishing the IE, you buy the BF Sword very early. Basically, your first back is a BF Sword buy. You need to get that IE done because you need to have the damage to chunk out these strong assassins in this Twitch that are currently where all the gold is being distributed on the side of Fifth Harmony. When you go for that Blade of the Rune King second item, the survivability you get from the lifesteal is not going to be enough to save you from these assassins. You need the damage and you need to be able to chunk them out before they can kill you. Yeah, I personally would have thought, uh, speaking of getting killed, Mother Milk actually gets condemned against the wall. The chains land on her. Oh boy. Wild Ghost to keep herself alive, but purring overstepped his boundaries. One Lonely G was there. 
actually gonna pick up that kill now she's in a 1v2 situation however gets ulted back to the safety of her team Corfin similar was in the back lines gets deleted himself as well as uh, Yvette now this that was 4v2 situation right now as Kha'Zix is splitting top lane yeah that was a very disjointed team fight uh, team chemistry really were not sure on where they should actually be focusing, who they should be focusing, and they wound up getting punished for it across the board, losing three members without really even having anyone else at threat of dying on the side of Fifth, Chem Fifth Harmony. Yeah, look at this huge wave that Fifth Harmony is able to stack up in that top lane. Well, that allows them to get two towers, and Baron's still up, so they could potentially take that, utilizing the pressure that they've just gained. And that was some weird pathing, meaning a flash is blown by the Akali. She might not have even needed to burn the flash with multiple members there, but she wouldn't have been in that. The same thing happening with the Kha'Zix here. Stop walking in those areas, dude. Yeah, Just but they want the 1v2 up. situation. Infinite Rampage getting stunned up here, but Ugas is hightailing it out of there, saying, hey, man, I don't know what you thought was going to happen here, but I'm not trying to fight that. Unequal yeah, numbers, they, not a fun fight. They managed to get multiple towers, but... Once you already get in that position and you know you're not going to be taking anything else, the worst pathing you can take is paths like that. The routes where they can easily just come out of their walls from their base and just cut you down really quickly. You have no vision of the area and there's no reason to be walking there. Take the longer way around. Yeah, definitely. Perhaps it's, I mean, it happens to me sometimes. I'll click one way and then I'll accidentally walk into tower range trying to do a, a dive on Lee Center or something like that. But. Yeah, definitely not the mistakes that you want to be making here. And additional items being picked up. Ugas now got a uh, Guardian Angel. That's going to be pretty big. Can't be deleted. Lots of damage to boot. Even if he does die, uh, he can be revived. So it facilitates a lot of aggressive play. Important to note also with the new Assassin changes to lethality items, that's actually 30% CDR for the Kha'Zix as well, so he's not losing a lot on utility either. With such a squishy build, he still definitely has a lot of the tools available to him that he might have gotten from a Black Cleaver build in as well. You can see that uh, they come from the bottom lane, but they're not actually trying to collapse onto this Poppy. They may feel it's not worth the chase. Yeah, I'm personally not a fan of building Black Cleaver on Kha'Zix. Uh, at least in solo queue because it it's such a deep power trap that you go into. Oh, hold that thought. Color C is actually getting caught out here. Could potentially go down, but they don't have very much damage to follow up. Akali's burst is not good against a tank. Infinite Rampage actually uh, flash dash or dashes away from Corpin's kidnapping bubble. But uh, as right. I was saying, the Black Cleaver gives you such a deep power trough on uh, Kha'Zix just because the components are pretty poor for him. You know, uh, Kindle Gem with, I believe it's a Kindle Gem, yeah, Kindle Gem and uh, Phage aren't the best items for him to get, but we are seeing an attempted to a Baron take from Fifth Harmony. I think they're going to pick They're having the Kha'Zix tank handily. this. There's no smite though. Yeah, they definitely can't smite that out. Oh, miscommunication. Ugas actually hopped over the wall while one little G is running rampant in the front lines, deleting tanks and the like. Now Corbin going into that bomblet form is about to drop, and that is actually a Baron and a 4 for 0 trade. Well, I call it a trade, but it's really just a win for 5th Harmony. Well, uh, I mean, if you count the Baron, then yeah, that's overall, just, they got nothing for that. They winded up forcing a fight that they had no business taking. They know they can't smite steal it. So their only hope is to potentially catch out multiple members and go for a team fight, but they really didn't have anything in their kit left. They uh, took a fight they knew they would lose from the beginning and wound up giving more kills over for it. And that's now four Drakes, that's Baron buff taken, a huge 12,000 gold lead now for the side of Fifth Harmony, and now they're coming to the bottom side of the map. We can see that Shen's set up for his split push. He definitely has the tools he needs. He's got Stand United and Teleport available in case something goes wrong. And we can see that Akali's setting up in the mid lane as well. They might be going for a 1-1-3. A lot of minions to work with right now. Yeah, really at this point, it's on the onus of Fifth Harmony to make a misstep, which would have to be an extremely large misstep for them uh, to get collapsed on in the 4v3. But there is pressure building and mounting and it's going to come collapsing onto Team Chemistry's base. 
We can see that those spikes are already starting to deal a massive amount of damage to the Vayne. She does have the sustain from the Blade of the Rune King, but every time those spike racks hit, that's just going to be another chunk of HP that Vayne is forced to heal up or back away for. Yeah, when I first started playing Kha'Zix and I saw that it was called Spike Racks, I thought it was a really, really dumb pun on the word Spice Racks, which is like, who makes a Spice Racks pun? <laughs> it's awful. Oh, oh we actually, can see that Akali's been taking pretty low. Yeah, I think one of the G, G probably had a little bit of a misstep. Took a lot it does of have How the gun that? blade to right. heal up for Ooh, it. Rack oh, Rackham Razor getting jumped on. There's the ultimate to peel, but we is still tanking tower. However, that is all they needed. Zoning them off that tower. Gonna pick it up. Now they pick it up. <laughs> there comes the engage. Uh, that's a whiff if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that's just maybe unfamiliarity with the champion coupled with the fact he's already insanely behind. He winds up using a yet another tool. Now Zack Ultimate is not going to be up or available for this next siege that's going to be coming in the mid lane. Yep. Minions are trailing very closely behind fifth harmony when they come in this is probably put ugas top lane i mean that wave is building much much more than the one in mid lane and they can just get the split pressure instead of trying to do a full-on 5v5 poke siege yeah i'm i'm really kind of questioning why they're going for this mid lane fight they were just successful in the bottom lane they burned multiple summoners on the side of bane and Jana. They have the opened inhibitor as well in the bottom lane. Just go for the four people bottom, one person top, and you'll be able to take that inhibitor just fine. Yeah, they definitely need to get that inhibitor to really make this siege worthwhile. Baron is about to be up, actually. Yeah, they're still sieging in the mid lane. Kha'Zix is getting blue buff right now. They have this Baron buff available, and they've got a huge gold lead. They only managed to get one tower for this huge lead that they were given. Uh, that honestly is just a huge error. Yeah, at least in this part of the siege, I believe they got all out, they got all the uh, inner turrets uh, towards the beginning, the earlier part of the Baron buff. But still, they could have gotten so much more if they played it correctly. Like they're just going to be backing away. Twitch and Lulu are already back in base. Yeah, and yeah, the Baron buff's gone. Yeah, it's, this is especially poor considering that they are playing against uh, a scaling comp. So the more time you give them is the more time they have to potentially make a comeback. Which, while it's looking really, really drastic and kind of stark considering the 13,000 gold deficit for Team Chemistry, it's definitely possible with the damage Bane can do. We can see with that Thormil being bought and then the Titanic being bought for the Shen instead, he's actually not winning these 1v1 trades. Uh, Shen usually at this point shreds other tanks with his empowered Q, but in this case we can see he's not dealing nearly as much damage. Yeah, wow, Mother Milk's definitely going to get chunked out here. Bunkler throwing some shields, uh, Color C doing what he can, but Mother Milk just burns the flash, gets safely out of there, but I mean, it's such an unnecessary flash burn. There's just no reason to be that far up. For whatever reason, Kha'Zix is doing a full clear of his jungle instead of keeping the pressure on. They're just giving more and more time for this Vayne to scale up. Vayne going for the triple attack speed items, really? There's one tank on the side. I was, of wait, I was waiting, I was waiting for you to comment on that lack I of had infinity had a BF sword edge. for like six, seven minutes into the game. I was, <laughs> I was just like waiting for you to stop talking so I could be like, Hey, love D. Love D. Dude, oh. check out Rackup's build. He still hasn't gotten Infinity Edge. Oh, wait. He's building that towards the uh, the Cloth Arm. It's actually going to go GA. towards... Yeah, oh, my GA. goodness. So You're just not going to deal enough damage with this build to the carries. Your team is giving you as much time as they can manage to let you farm up. You've got the most farm in the game. They're donating a huge amount of their gold to you. And basically, this composition is built around the vein. LeBlanc is not really a primary carry in a two-carry two composition like this. So they're really putting all their eggs into the vein basket. And this is not the build you want to be able to perform with. I don't really think she can. I mean, she, we even saw against, uh, you know, poking Infinite Rampage just a little bit. Each auto-attack is doing about 200, which is, that's, it, it's laughable, really, the lack of damage that she has. Especially considering now that she's that's her fourth item. She only has space for, let's say, a Lord Dominic's Regard. Or actually, I'd wanted to buy a uh, Executioner's Calling and build towards the um, 
I've the name of the item slipping my mind right now, but it does reduce the healing, which there's a lot of healing on the side of Fifth Harmony, but Ugas is actually going in on the Rack of Razor. Now one little G getting carried back into the team of Team Chemistry, but now purring similarly getting chunked out pretty heavily. Down. Yep, a call is the stand down. United. They put the stand united on the wrong target. Yeah, but now Jogo Milk is trying his best to deal out all that DPS in the back line, but Rack and Razor is having a better showing of it. You can see Infinite Rampage there. Color C getting very low. Good two man taunt as Corbin goes down. Infinite Rampage flashes forward. Yvette flashes back. Channel TP, but there goes yet another stealth. Oh, that was a curious flash place. from uh, Rack and Razor, but he's definitely going to go down, and that's probably the game. We could see through that entire team fight, Vayne was just free hitting targets and barely got any silver bolt procs. The whole point of what you're building with triple attack speed is to at least get silver bolt procs. If you're constantly swapping targets every Wait. other auto, you're not getting any benefit out of it. Elder Drake? Just, got the Elder Drake, yeah. Just, just take the base. Well, you know. At this point, I'm, I'm really, I'm assuming they just don't want to close out the game because there are just so many paths they can take that are just easier. I mean, we can see all three lanes right now are just pushing in. They're, they're going for the bottom lane, but there's a huge wave top, a huge wave mid, and there's three dead. Yeah. Instead, they back away for the Elder Drake. Now they're just now coming to the bottom lane. They're still going to be able to brute force this just fine. I would have liked to see them just brute force this, brute force this much earlier. Yeah, especially considering that they were uh, dead, so there's very yeah. little contention to be had. Are they backing away again? I don't think they can actually fight this third. They haven't backed yet, but they but do they have, have good the mana. Four, they health. have the level four Elder Drake and yeah, almost full HP. They have Ocean Drake. Really, just yeah, just kill the LeBlanc in one hit. An auto would have been a kill there. Yeah, she had the uh, the Q proc on her. Just needed to activate it. Yeah, and this is getting really drawn out. I think Rack and Razor is actually building towards a Bloodthirster next, which she sh oh, probably should have okay. just substituted earlier. Sold that GA after it got procced. Not really much. Selling GA of it. that okay. Here's the thing. I need to tell everyone now. Anybody who's listening, anybody who reviews this game in the future now. Look up how much gold you get for selling GA. It's almost never worth selling unless you can buy a huge item for it. Just keep the GA until you can buy something huge in return. Otherwise, you're wasting a ton of your gold. Yeah, in other words, do don't sell GA for a vampiric and a longsword. Yeah, let's do the let's do the math here. So, 30 armor, 40 attack damage, and with what she got, she gets 25 attack damage and 10% life steal. Hmm. Yeah, you sell it for 960, not even a thousand gold, not even a giant's belt worth of items when you sell the GA. You're better off keeping the 40 AD and the 30 armor just as stats because you're, you're, you're basically, if that unless that item slot is something huge, which means bigger than a BF sword, needs to be something bigger, you're basically wasting item slots. Yeah, wasting item slots and wasting a pretty huge chunk of gold there. And she didn't right. even really get you know, a better stat. Wow, that was a huge chunk onto that inhibitor. Nearly get it, but Corbin's actually jumping in. Oh, here comes there the comes Stand United. But Corbin actually kidnaps Ugas as he gets pushed back towards the vein. That's not really what you want uh, to have in your vein. Don't deliver a Kha'Zix. And now Infinite Rampage deliver delivering himself and a wild growth knockup. Uh, they're not going to pick up any damage onto the tank. This Now this should be the game. So it took two Barons and Elder Drake. A downed, in, a downed inhibitor tower for about 20 minutes and uh, a 20,000 gold lead before Fifth Harmony finally realized they can brute force and win this game. Yep, and there it goes. Actually, they've, yeah, they're going to be able to end. So that will actually do it for game uh, two, if you guys remember the uh, forfeit of game one. But Fifth Harmony takes that one in a pretty dominating style. Right, and this is exactly the matchup we were expecting. This is the second place team team versus the last place team. There was already a huge disparity to begin with. We could see there was not a lot of teamwork on the side of Team Chemistry, ironically. Uh, they don't have what, a, what I would assume to be an actual shot caller, and uh, they definitely need to refine their builds as well, figure out what it is they need or what it is they want. Yeah, I'd imagine that they're kind of just like, I would I would have been tilted honestly, if my jungler Probably. didn't take it. But I mean, 
tilted for 40 minutes definitely I mean, doesn't help it's it's just like one of those things where you're like yeah all right it's it's a poor situation but we can play through it and there's definitely moments for there where they could have definitely played through it and you know scaled up and i mean they had so much time to scale and that's really what their comp was around and they still couldn't even make one team fight work and Definitely don't difficult. let the damage charts fool you. That vein should easily be a good 15,000 damage up on everyone else. She got to free hit multiple fights and just didn't deal the damage she should have. Overall, I'm very disappointed in how that <laughs> game went. Because it was definitely winnable despite having your jungler take heal. Really just a lot of misplays and... Uh, I guess maybe even a lack of experience on these champions for almost everyone. Yeah, I could imagine them picking that Zack simply because it wasn't banned. And that, I, that may even, be it. Even, even then, like, it gets banned so frequently elsewhere that it would be pretty tough to get any practice time on it. Perhaps in scrims, but even then, you wouldn't have enough scrim time to sort of cover the weakness of that lack of practice. Well, even, even if you do not have a lot of practice on the champion, it's very straightforward. Not even managing to hit your elastic slingshots is a huge problem. That is the most important part of your kit. Despite the massive buffs he received in his rework, if you still can't land your E, then there's really not much point to picking the champion to begin with. Yeah, he actually took the most damage of his team there. Actually, most damage in the game. <laughs> But as we look at these charts and you guys digest the very drawn out game that you just witnessed, we will be taking a quick break as the teams set right back up for which would be a game three. So we'll be right back. <laughs> 